Good morning, and I hope you will enjoy worshiping with us today uh, at Laurel Hill Baptist Church. Even though we're not in the sanctuary today because of snow, we've had to cancel, but I hope you will enjoy this online service. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this technology through which we can uh, join together and worship you. Be with us this week. Watch over us. Help guide us. And Father, help us to fill your strength and spirit in our life in every day. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.
last several weeks at Laurel Hill Baptist Church, we've been looking at the letters that John wrote to various churches that he sent them to, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. And we're still working on the first letter uh, that he wrote. But today I want to start with a really old story from the Bible, from Genesis chapter 4, about two brothers, the sons of Adam and Eve. Cain, the older brother, tilled the land and grew crops. Abel, the younger brother, raised the flocks and the herds. And they both wanted to worship God and bring an offering to the Lord. And so Cain brought some of the crops that he grew from the land, and Abel brought some of the most delicious parts of the firstborn of some of the flocks that he raised. He brought the best of the best. And when each of the brothers brought their offering to the Lord, uh, the Bible tells us that the Lord was very pleased with Abel's offering, but with Cain's he was not. He was actually displeased. And Genesis doesn't give us detail about why God felt that way, but in Hebrews, it mentions Abel's faith is what made his gift acceptable to the Lord. But we do believe that it was something in their heart that God saw in the way they brought the gift that was the problem. And Cain, after this, was very downcast and disturbed, and he began to become bitter, and jealousy began to grow in his heart. And the Lord stopped him and warned him and gave him a warning and said, Why are you downcast? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you do what is wrong, sin is crouching at the door and it wants to take you, but you must master it. The Lord gave him this very strong warning. And I think God also gives us warnings like that too through the Holy Spirit and in our life as well. Sometimes you might feel this little urge, that's not such a good idea. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Or maybe I need to stop and rethink this. Or maybe, you know, I don't really mean that. I, I need to say this a different way. Or maybe it's not right for me to do this. I need to find another way. So the Holy Spirit speaks to us today as well. But do we listen? Now Cain did not listen to this warning of the Lord. And he invited his younger brother out into the fields. And he attacked him and killed him. And then later God came to him and said, Where is your brother? And Cain lied to God and he said, Why would I know where my brother is? Am I my brother's keeper? And actually he should have been. But God got mad at Cain and he told him that he would have to leave. He was banished from his family. He was banished from the land that produced crops. It would no longer be able to feed him and support him. And so he spent his life as kind of a lonely wanderer in the world and kind of afraid for his life. And because of the sin that came into his heart. And so John uses this story today to talk to us about love. Now love is a very important theme in the letter that John wrote. In 1 John 2.5 it tells us that if we obey God's word that his love is made complete in us. In 1 John 2, 9, it tells us that if we hate our brother, that we are living in darkness and not in the light. And then in 1 John 3, 10, which we ended on uh, two weeks ago, it says that anyone who does not love his brother is not a child of God. If we do not love our brother, we're not a child of God. I would like to read today from chapter 3, starting at verse 11. 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? 
because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Now anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. This passage starts that this is the same message that you've had from the beginning. In other words, the message has not changed. And if you think of what Moses wrote when he said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and then in Leviticus he says to love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus Christ also com you know, repeated these commands that we must love one another and that they will know that we are Christians, that we will know that we follow Jesus because of our love. So the message hasn't changed all the way through that if we follow Jesus, if we're obedient to Jesus, that we must love our brother. And John says that we must not be like Cain who killed his righteous brother because of jealousy. And you see, Cain's actions were not right, but Abel was righteous. And he uses this terrible example of hate in the Old Testament to teach us about love. That if you hate your brother, that you are a murderer and not a child of God. John wants us to see the contrast between Cain's hate and actions and the love that Jesus Christ has for us. Cain's actions were evil and Abel's were righteous and yet Cain murdered him. And so John also warns us that we should not be surprised if the world hates us. If we're, if we're living right in Christ and we're following everything that he has commanded us and we're loving the world, the world might not be ready for that. It might not appreciate that. Just as Cain killed Abel, it might also persecute us as well if we really live seriously for Christ. But he gives us the hope that says that we have passed from death to life. And you see the world is living in death, but we have passed from death into life. And so we're not worried about this because the life of Jesus remains in us. But anyone who does not love remains in this death. Now, how do we know what love really is? There's a lot of people that talk about love in the world today. And I want to read from uh, 1 John 3 and continue in verse 16 and read through 18. And this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love in words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Jesus laid down his life for us. And that's how we know what love really is. God had to teach us. God had to show us. Now Cain killed his brother. But Jesus is the one who died for us. Jesus laid down his life for you because he loves you. And so we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers as well, just as Jesus did. Can you see the difference between Jesus Christ, his love, his humility, his unselfishness, and Cain's hate and jealousy and bitterness? Now, John wants you to see this contrast and to never forget it because he wants you to teach you what love really is. Now, nearly everyone knows uh, the verse from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. But look at 1 John 3.16. It says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Now, every time I read through this passage of Scripture, I have to stop there. And I have to pause because 
I think it's difficult to take that in. I think it's difficult uh, to go any further when you hear those words that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and that we should lay down our lives for one another. This verse is just too incriminating, and I, and I have to ask myself, am I living this way? Do I love others this way? Am I willing to lay down my life for my brothers and for my sisters? And whenever I think about this, I, I wonder in my life, when have I ever laid down my life for someone else? Now, I think there's examples, wonderful examples of kindnesses that people do for one another. And our church is filled with many of them. And you are one of the most amazing, loving groups of people that I've ever met. This week, I received three thank you cards in the mail from things that you have done. And I had nothing to do with these, but you did these on your own. One of them came from our sheriff, the Augusta County Sheriff, who wanted to thank our church for the things that they had done for the deputies in our community and the kindness that you had showed them. Another thank you card came from the son of one of our church members who wanted to just uh, thank our church for the way we had taken care of his mother uh, who had had some water problems in her basement and could have led to great damage and some people at our church helped re make those repairs and also the way we had cared for her uh, in other ways through the death of her husband, his father. Another thank you card came from one of our members who wanted to thank our church for the help that we provided to get her furnace running again and, and making it run safely uh, this winter. And so you do a lot of things like that for each other and to love each other. But notice what Jesus said here was when you love like Jesus does, that we're willing to lay down our life for each other. And you see, I know what Jesus has done. I know what he did for me, how he humbled himself, how he became human and how he came to earth and lived among us and how he died as a sacrifice for our sins in a way that was pleasing to God. He willingly laid down his life for us and then he rose to life again, showing us that he had crushed all of our sins, my sins and your sins. And Jesus is asking us to have that same kind of love. He has set the standard really high and, he re and John wants to drive this point home by comparing what love of Christ is like compared to the hate that was in Cain's heart. And he says that if you do not have this kind of love for one another, that we're still dead that we're still living in, in the dead lostness of this world that's around us and eternal life is not in us. But if we do love our brother, then the love of Christ is in us. And can you see the contrast between the love of Christ and the hate of Cain? Now, do you have this kind of love in your life, self-sacrificing love, humbly putting yourself last and others first, are you able to love like Christ loves you? Are you able to lay down your life for others? Now, we like to get our way. We, we like to have things when we want to have them, the way we want to have them. And we cherish our independence and our liberty and our freedoms. We want to live our life in a way that's comfortable and, and that our life is better and that our family's life is better. But we're not very good at laying down our life for each other and thinking about what other people need. You see, we get mad and we say the wrong things. We hold grudges and we spread rumors and gossip. We get impatient and we get grumpy with each other. We have disagreements and we have arguments. And we do awful things to each other. And yet all the time we're doing this, we think we're okay. We think that this is all right. It's for, because it's easy for us to see the sins that other people do and it's hard for us to see the sins 
in her own life. But you see, if you love your brother, you're willing to lay down your life for him. So if you are willing to lay down your life for another person, how can you criticize them or condemn them? If you are willing to lay down your life for another person, how could you ignore their needs and look down on them? If you are willing to lay down your life for another person, how could you say something so hateful and mean to them or do something so manipulative to them in their life? Jesus wants us to lay down our life for each other, and yet we have trouble sometimes just being able to talk to each other. And then he tells us that if we see someone who is in need and we don't help them, then his love is not in us. He says if one of our brothers has a need and we don't do anything to help them, but we could, that the love of Christ is not in us and we are like Cain. We need to help other people with action and with truth, not just with words. We can't just tell people, you know, uh, hope is coming, things will get better, I'm praying for you, but we need to help them in their needs with actions and with truth. Their love must have some action behind it. Now I want to read uh, the rest of this chapter starting at verse 19. And I want you to think about this question, is your heart right with God? Are you at peace with God? Do you feel at rest in God? Or do you feel like your heart is condemning you? Because you know that maybe you don't have love in your life like Christ. Maybe you know that you've had some hate in your life like Cain. And so what is the status of your heart? And in this next section of scripture, I think, looks at that. Starting at verse 19. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how our hearts are set at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, our hearts do not condemn us. If our hearts do not condemn us, then we have confidence before God and we receive from him anything that we ask because we obey his commands and we do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us we know it by the Spirit He has given us. Now, this passage is talking about having a heart that's condemned, or having a heart that's content in Jesus Christ. And if you have things that in your heart that you know that condemn you, then you need to go to God for give forgiveness, and you need to ask for His forgiveness in your life. Do you have a heart that's content in the Lord? Do you know in your spirit that you are right with God? Do you know the Lord's presence in your life? Because you can. I hope that today, if you have questions about this, that you will settle this issue in your heart. That you will give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive your sins and to make you into a new person. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this very clear and blunt passage that John has given us about how our love must be like Jesus' love that's willing to lay down our life for each other. So how can we harbor hate in our hearts when we're willing to die for someone else? So Father, I pray that you will help us be more like your son Jesus Christ and less like Cain who was a murderer and harbored hate in his life. So, Father, I pray that you will go with us this week and whisper to us what you want us to know and do and say. And, Father, I pray that if there is someone in our presence this morning who does not know you, that they will, for one time in their life, finally turn their life over to you and let you take charge of their life, let you be Lord of their life, and to receive the forgiveness that comes from you when they confess. 
And Father, I pray that we will trust you in all ways. Not worry about what's going on in the world, but to look to you and trust you and make sure that we know how to radiate your love to the world around us that needs it so badly. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.